Hi, I'm Travis. And I'm Greg. And you're listening to Building Blank. A collaborative world building podcast. And today we're talking about who we are and what we're doing. And why we're doing this podcast. So Travis, I guess we should start with telling the audience here a little bit about us. So Great idea. I guess you you lead off here. All right. Well, uh, again, I am Travis. Um, I am a dungeon master and game master for a uh, role-playing game. I've built my own world uh, with help from my players. They've given some input. Um, other than that, I am a big fan of fantasy and have been for a very long time. And how about you? What are you, uh, what do you got going on, Greg? Yeah, uh, pretty similar. I'm, I'm writing a story and I needed a world to build it in. And that's, that's pretty much about me. I play the, I'm in the campaign with you. Yeah. And we've been wanting to do something like this for a long time. Mm. And, uh, in that vein, we just kind of jumped right, right in. Yeah. Just like any writing or world building or anything like that, you kind of got to just jump in head first. It's the best way to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is our first time doing a podcast. Uh, we're learning. You're learning. We're all learning about something. Yeah. So what are we trying to do with this podcast? So what, what we want to do is we want to we wanna take the very daunting and overwhelming topic of world building and break it up into smaller pieces. We want to... Um, Start from the very beginning. Yeah, very beginning. We're going to start, start, say, you know, we're going to pick a place. Um, this is what we're going to build today or this week um, with some input from each other, from uh, the audience. Yeah, and then basically we just hopefully inspire others to build their own worlds and maybe collaborate with us on ours. Yeah, because like again, like the greatest, the biggest obstacle I find is just taking that first step. Yeah, finding the way in. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna build blank, um, and it's gonna be an open source world that we're world building. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, and so, what qualifies us to be world builders? I guess is the next question. So. Just to get things rolling here, what inspired your world, Travis? So my world um, that you made for the D and D for that we made for our D and D great game. Uh, well, I have been playing for a number of years, and I DM'd a module, um, and about a couple chapters in, I found that I would kind of cannibalize the chapter and take the parts I liked and you know, throw the rest out. What are my players actually going to use? And, and I had a lot of fun doing that, but then I thought like, well, why am I telling the story that I want to tell and have, make, trying to make it fit into a pre-generated setting? Yeah. So I, I took the plunge and started working on my own world. Um, and at the time I was playing, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, the one that takes place in Egypt. And uh, I got this idea because there's a section, it's Egyptian, um, but it's like Ptolemaic Egypt. So there is like Alexandria is a Greek city, mm -hmm. right? And then there's other sections of uh, Roman legionnaires coming in and Roman inspired areas. And I thought that was a really cool mix. And I really wanted to blend. I thought that I could blend hot, like standard high fantasy with um, classical antiquity. And it would be a neat, different, um, different feel. Yeah, it's not completely overdone, kind of like the vaguely Northern European, yeah, probably England medieval fantasy that everybody's, you know, that it, everyone does. Uh, and I thought, hey, well, wait, why don't we just take it back a thousand years, right? Um, so parts of my world are heavily Roman inspired or heavily uh, Greek inspired um, and so on for a bunch of different 
um, cultures, ancient cultures. I've um, did a lot of research into them so that, you know, I don't want to, don't want to stereotype anything. I actually like did the work and um, it was a neat, uh, fun blend, I think. Yeah, it is fun. It not the usual run of the mill. Yeah, thing. and then and then our group got together, and so how long had you been building this before we started our group? Um, so I had kind of started. Um, the campaign I wrote was actually for a different group, but then we started, and I was like, okay, well, um, I wasn't the dungeon master for the other group, so I was like a couple back because we were rotating. And I was like, okay, I have lots of time to do this. I'll, I'll do this. And then we started our group. And I'm like, no, I don't have any time. <laughs> yeah. Just jump right in. So. Yeah. And that's kind of been the spirit of this podcast as well. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping right in. Um, so yeah, I had about a couple months lead time, but nothing really solid until we, a couple weeks before we started playing. Okay. Cool. And how about you? Like, what what are your inspiration or influences for your world? Well, I guess to begin with, mine was I wanted to write, and obviously inspired by Tolkien. Yeah, and uh, of course Dune, like Frank Herbert, those magnificent giant works of mm-hmm. the worlds that are just so massive. Yeah, and so that's where I wanted to start, but I was really just kind of going through some personal stuff Mm -hmm. and I needed to write it. Yeah. And I was also just kind of surfing the web, getting lost on rabbit holes about uh, Celtic mythology. Mm -hmm. And I know the idea that some of these myths and legends, they kind of read like a science fiction or a fantasy, like where like the weapons they have, like Hades helm of invisibility and uh, Zeus's lightning bolt and stuff. They really just sound kind of like technology like a like a cool ass gun yeah or yeah. just a fantasy with some magic yeah, yeah. in it and so i was kind of thinking of that stuff and i really like the idea of like lineages and just uh demigods and stuff yeah and and the beginnings of like these creation myths basically yeah and i wanted to write and i was looking up all this kind of stuff and those two things came together and this kind of creation myth of my own started to form. And then I started to get some ideas from there. Mm -hmm. And then kind of same thing. I just jumped in. I just started writing. Yeah. I had heard about NaNoWriMo. Yeah. Yeah. National novel writing month. But that was in January. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't want to wait whatever, 11 months to do it. So I just kind of did my own in uh, January and just, just started going. Yeah. And kind of didn't really look back from there. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have you been working on this? Well, that would have been in 2018, January 2018. Okay. But I really, I started getting the first ideas a little over two years ago. I think yeah. it was like August 2017. Okay. Oh, no, I guess that'd be three years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, I don't even remember now. I've been writing for a long time. Years. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think for about six months before that, it was swirling around in my head. And uh, before I finally actually wrote anything down. Yeah. And again, I find the hardest part of any project is starting. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can be inspired and then just kind of that might not go anywhere. Yeah. Which is why, like, I really want to show anyone who's listening that anyone can world build, no matter how daunting it seems. Yeah. Um. We'll just give you a place to start. Yeah, we're hopefully. <laughs> so with that, I think we're going to take a short break. And uh, yeah, uh, see you guys after the break. And welcome to the break. Thank you, Travis. I'm glad to be on this break here with you. You're welcome. Now, this is the part of the show where we would like to do uh, shout outs. Yeah, our sponsors. If anybody's listening out there wants to sponsor us, this is where you go. This is this is exactly where we'd plug you. So 
Uh, uh, but since we can't plug you, I guess we'll have to plug ourselves. Yeah, the, this episode is brought to you by us. Yeah, so you can reach us at our social medias, which are... We have Facebook, uh, Building Blank, a collaborative world building podcast. We also have Instagram, uh, at Building Blank Podcast. Yeah, and you can email us as well uh, about any of your world building inspirations or anything like that. That's uh, buildingblankpodcast at gmail.com. Even if you just want to say hi, we would be happy to hear from you. Yeah, maybe somebody out there can be the first one to email us. All right, well, we're excited to, uh, to meet you. And I think that just about sums it up for our break. So uh, let's get back to the show. All right, we'll keep on plugging. And we're back. All right. Um, so, Greg, as a world builder, where where did you start on your world? World, what like what was your process when you first initially took up the task? All right. Well, where I started, I wanted a geographically correct world, and yeah, I don't, that's I was kind of obsessed with it, and I just didn't know enough about geography to do it. So I started going on websites like uh, stack exchange uh-huh. and um, they got a great world building channel, I guess it'd be called there. So I was looking that up and the more I learned about it, the more I realized how daunting the task was. Yeah. It's like, a, it, yeah. it can be a very big task because like you're an author, not a geologist. Yeah, exactly. Like some of those guys on there are just a wealth of information mm-hmm. and they go right into like the, yeah, the geology literally and uh, erosion and and all that stuff. But so I, I realized I didn't want it to be perfect. Yeah. Because I always want my story to be the main like decider of, of where it's going. I don't yeah, want, you don't want it to be overshadowed. Yeah, I want the story to dictate the world more than the world dictates the story. But mm-hmm. it, there is a bit of play there. Like they go back and forth. Yeah, they're kind of connected. Yeah. So that's where I started. I started looking on those and then, yeah, then I realized that that was a pretty daunting task. So I started looking for ways to like maybe a world simulator. Or like like to expedite the science of it. Yeah. Like where would a desert be on which latitudes are they on earth and um, where would there be rainforests and stuff? So I started looking around for that stuff. And your your world, you were telling me, is roughly the same size as Earth, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I just thought it's hard enough to try and build something similar to Earth with all new continents, never mind a completely foreign world. So yeah, it's basically like many fantasy. It's just kind of Earth. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I wanted it to be like Earth and to be accurate. And... So I was playing a lot of Civilization V at the time. And, oh, and then the other thing was I wanted it to be like a Pangea. Yeah. I just, I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. It's just all one world so that there's no, you know, old world, new world sort of thing like we have here. So I wanted it to be all one continent and just like some little islands. Um, And also kind of, it could almost be like this is earth almost yeah like like, if there was a pangea i mean there is a pangea from before like in a different timeline this could have been yeah kind of and so i was also drawn a lot on like the myths of ancient greece and the the celtic world of myth yeah as well so i still trying to keep it kind of in our world a bit but yeah like i said so i was playing a lot of civ 5 and they have a kind of a map generator yeah and so they have a few little options you can put in there. And I wasn't too sure how it would work at first, but I went through it a few times, kind of tweaking it mm-hmm. and then just like restarting the game each time. And I really, I just needed somewhere to start. Yeah. And so I got a shape that I liked and there was a couple deserts that I thought were cool and some islands. Yeah. And, and that was it really. Good starting point. So I took that and then I just drew it on a sheet of paper yeah, and outlined where everything would be in there. And that's where I started. Really, that was 
step one. And then from there, I needed to know where my story was starting. Mm. So then I just like zoomed in on one island that's kind of in the north and started really doing like the small detailed stuff yeah. there. Like which cities are there? What's going on? You know, why are they there? And that's what I did. And so the rest of it is still just kind of an empty world, more or less. Yeah. If like I get an idea. It's there, but yeah. you, you're, you're not visiting it yet, so it doesn't need to be flushed out. Exactly. Like maybe yeah. they'll talk about it. They'll say like the mainland or from the continent. That's the other thing that um, I do know that is a big daunting, like you're writing a story. A lot of people feel that you have to do all of it first. Yeah. Well, and where do, where do we think we get that from? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Speaking of um, um, probably from Tolkien. Yeah. Cause that's um, what he did. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, a lot of people feel like they need to flush out every little detail, mm-hmm. which can make it a lot um, overwhelming. Yeah. Um, I, I really like, yeah, you kind of make the broad strokes of like the skeleton, but we're not going to be there. So um, we'll just focus on this little area. I, li- I really like how you did that. Yeah. Um, and what about you? Like, where did where did you start? Like, was it similar to mine? Uh, it was similar. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, my, my world is in no way, shape or form geographically correct in the slightest. <laughs> it, I knew I wanted a desert. Yep. I knew that I wanted like a more foresty sort of area. Uh, and I knew I wanted, um, some islands. Yeah. And you had your theme already. Yeah. I had my theme already. So, the, because of the theme, like the Egypt and the Rome and, and Greece. Mm-hmm. So that's what I started with. And so what I did is I actually like, I drew a, um, I drew a continent mm-hmm. in my little sketchbook that kind of looks like, honestly, it kind of looks like um, the coastline of Alaska, but like, really elongated and fucked up. <laughs> I'm not joking. I will, I can show you later. Like, Wait, was that a, was that intentional? Well, I was like looking at different coastlines, like to see what they look like on earth. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that looks kind of neat. And I kind of, I was like, I'll, I'll show you later what I was looking at. And it's kind of fucked up. But anyway, um, so I, I did that, made some islands, um, drew the continent. And then I was like, okay, we're going to put this city here, this city there, and this city here. The three, like the Greek city, the the um, Roman, and the Egypt one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is desert. Okay, so we're going to need a mountain range to cut this off. And Excuse me. Um, and then, because we were, again, mine is different, so there's no actual except story other than the campaign that I'm writing or wrote that you guys did Mm -hmm. um i picked a spot on the map and said here this is where we're starting um so um i actually had a lot of help from my players which you're one of uh i know when we first started i said okay these are my three big cities um if you want to be from one of them great if you want to be from small town X, tell me about your small town that you grew up in. Yeah. And I had a lot of help that way. Um, not everyone did that. Um, actually, I think only one player actually gave me, no, two players gave me a small town Yeah, that they did. Um, yeah, because I picked your capital. You picked the capital and then um, one of the other players picked another capital. Right. And the other, the third didn't give me anywhere. So I just kind of assigned him a spot. <laughs> yeah. And then like, we kind of just built, I knew that there's a couple plot points and, and that they needed to be in a certain spot in the, like in the map of getting to whichever city. And we kind of built week by week from there, really. Yeah. Um, I did it one session at a time or a couple ahead of time. Yeah. So like both of our approaches are actually quite different yeah like 
I wanted that accuracy, but then also, like, in no way am I improving anything in my world. Mine at the very start was almost entirely improv. Yeah. Like, there was bare bones, and there was parts that I knew I wanted to have in my campaign. Um, but I definitely built it week by week ahead of where you guys were going. Um, and, of course, like, I did do some more um, refining yeah. after the fact. And some, like, as I went on, I got better at it. Like, yeah. That's kind of the trick, eh, is, like, just getting started. Yeah. Like, do you think it helped you that you knew we were coming next week and we expected to play somewhere? Yeah, well, it was actually kind of like, this was an idea I was having for a while, mm-hmm. right? And then um, I was, like, starting to work on it, and then we moved, and we all decided that, hey, we're going to start playing D&D in this group. We're going to form this group, play D&D. Travis, you're going to DM. I'm like, oh, shit. I, well, I got I to gotta be quick yeah. on, like, what we're doing. So... And sometimes that's better, right? Yeah, yeah. I kind of probably like, could have just been spinning your wheels for like months. Before yeah, getting started. I, and and I was like, all of a sudden, I'm like, I need to have a world ready because mm-hmm. I'm not doing uh, a pre-generated one. Yeah, right. I want to do my own. I have my story I want to tell, um, and go from there. And of course, like as the time went on, there's more. I I did more ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we went on um but still um there are p- bits in my map that are completely just there's nothing there <laughs> and i'm like okay well they're not going there so let's not worry about that right yeah so really just broad strokes yeah i, I did big broad strokes and then i decided hey we can do the fine detail when it comes to it um yeah. Which, hell, that might not be the best way for everybody to do it, fly yeah. by the seat of their pants, but... But I think we're both on this agreement with the uh, the broad strokes mm-hmm. and then getting started and then just putting the detail where it needs to be. Yeah. And, yeah, because, yeah. I mean, if I, if I had to wait until everything was done before we started playing, we probably still wouldn't be playing. Yeah. And we've... We've been doing that game has been running for more than a year now, so yeah. Like I, I, I had to tell myself that in my book. Like, it's better to have something exist and be not perfect, yeah. than to have something perfect but doesn't exist. Like just this perfect idea of this perfect world. Yeah, but it just doesn't exist anywhere. Yeah, right. Like it's, I it's. I think it's better to have something that's just always in progress. Yeah. And that's, that's how it sometimes has to be, depending on what you're doing. <laughs> um, I know I, I honestly don't have, like, the time in my day to, like, if, if, if I wanted to full-time work on this, then I could probably do that. But mm-hmm. let's, let's be honest, like, and, and let's be honest, any of your listener, like, you don't have time for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is also a little bit of what inspired us to start it in the first place. Start this podcast. Yeah, you mean? yeah, yeah. Podcast. Yeah, because we want to like, hey, you know what? You're if you know, you're hey, you're thinking of hey, maybe I want to create my own world to do, um, run a RPG in, or maybe I want to write a short story or write a book, but I don't know, I don't know what I want to, I don't want to, you know, do all the work. Well. Yeah. Or you just have time to do the work that you like. Yeah, exactly. Like you just so. want to run your game or you want to write the story, but you don't want to spend years developing this perfectly, you know, synchronized world. And then with this, that, that would be in a perfect world in like, you know, a couple of years, have like an actual functioning world that we've all built together. Yeah. So what we really want to do is, is we're going to step by step, we're going to make a world that is not going to have a defined map, which is one thing I always use when I'm world building is a map first. But then uh, what we want to do is say, we're going to build a town and uh, we're going to get your input. 
uh, do some polls, do some, um, maybe even contests down the road. Maybe. Uh, and we also, Hey, if you guys want to make a town in our world that we're building, send it into us. Like we'll talk about it. Yeah. Or, and, uh, or even you don't want to give us something to put in the world, but do you want to talk about how you did something? Like if we're talking about taverns, yeah, maybe you have a tavern that you did and you want to tell us. And you're really proud of and yeah. you want to tell us about it. Yeah. Like. Or even what inspired you to create your world. Yeah. What did inspire you to create your world? Yeah. Because um, we'd love to hear that. I mean, we might be way on the left field here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking of inspiration, why don't we go to our ending segment of weekly inspiration. All right. Why don't we do that? So what is your weekly inspiration, Greg? I saw a quote at the beginning of a song where, and I'm probably butchering the quote and the name, but it's, it's not how long we live, but it's the intensity in which one chooses to live life. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what the quote was, but it was said by Again, I can't remember the first name, but Lola Brigida. Okay. And I just thought that Brigida, the second part of that last name, was a pretty cool sounding name. That does sound like a cool name. So I thought that could be a lady's name, like Brigida. Sounds like a pretty like strong female, maybe yeah. a warrior name. Or it could be like, and I'm probably just thinking a full metal alchemist with a Briggs Fort oh, Briggs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why I like it, but Brigida kind of sounds like maybe a northern town. Yeah. Or like, I don't know, it kind of sounds like Brig, like like a prison yeah, in a yeah. ship. Or like... That's cool. Or um, Brigand. I don't know, those mm. kind of words come to mind. So the Brigida, that's cool. That's so really then, cool. So then I write it down into my notes and then then I'll populate it somewhere. Yeah. Like I just got a bunch of names that I just, oh, cool. Or I like that. And then I yeah. assemble it. But uh, yeah, so that's my weekly inspiration. Travis, uh, what was yours? So my weekly inspiration um, uh, has a little bit of background. We recently had a change in our D&D group, like a, a work, schedule, schedule, ah, work schedule change. So we were going to miss be missing two, two of our players. So I was going to do a one shot. And um, the morning of um, the day that we played, or the night before, I had a dream of, and it was an adventure with three dwarves. Um, and I thought, I woke up and I thought, hey, I just found my one shot. We're going to have a party of dwarves. And then it's also like Thanksgiving is this week. Um, Canadian Thanksgiving. Canadian Thanksgiving, yes. We are Canadian. <laughs> um, Canadian Thanksgivings this week. Why don't we do a Thanksgiving themed one shot? Um, I reskinned an owl bear into a giant turkey bear, and it was terrifying. Yeah, it had a uh, I gave it a frightening gobble uh feature, and uh, my my three dwarven players uh barely scraped by, but they uh ended up with a fantastic feast out of it. Yeah, no, that was really fun. That was a good one shot. I, I got the quote here. It's Gina Lola Brigida. We are all born to die. The difference is the intensity with which we choose to live. That's what it is. It's a nice quote. Yeah, it's nice. I think it was a. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter what song. Oh, maybe I guess I should save the song. It was um, a highly suspect song. All right. So that just about wraps up what, who we are and what we're doing. Yeah. The first episode of Building Blank is down but uh before we go a little bit of housekeeping uh what are we doing next week so next week we are going to start building our world yeah we need a point to get in we need somewhere to start and we're going to start by building a town yep and we got a few ideas what, yep. what are we thinking here so uh, i have a couple options and we're going to need your help so yep. we're going to have four options to choose from uh, coastal, farming slash prairie, forest, or mountain. Uh, and we're going to put up our um, a poll 
on our Facebook and Instagram, Facebook Building Blank, a collaborative world building podcast, or Instagram at Building Blank Podcast. Yeah, or you can email us at buildingblankpodcast at gmail.com and uh, send us your inspirations, maybe of your own world as well, or how you got started.